In this video, we're going to take a look at the third approach to solving a differential equation, which is a numerical approach. Uh, this is where we're going to, right from the differential equation, just grind out a, a table of values for what the function is equal to at different times. And we will never know a formula for that function. We will just get its values step by step. Like I said, the, the final answer will be in the form of a table. Now, there's more than one way to do it. And the, but the easiest way, uh, in fact, it may be something that you've encountered in Calc 1, um, or Calc 2 perhaps, is uh, called Euler's method. So that's what we're going to take a look at. Let me just take a minute to talk about the, the core idea behind Euler's method, and then we'll apply it to an example. And the idea is very simple. It's simply this. At any point in time, if we know what the function is equal to, and we know how fast it is changing, of course that means knowing the derivative, then we can estimate what y will be a little bit later. It's that simple. Suppose we have a function and we know that y currently, and I'm just using the word now to represent like sort of any current time wherever we are in the process, y right now is 15, and suppose we know how fast it's changing. So in other words, we know the derivative now, and let's say that the derivative right now is 3. Okay, so we know that the function is right here at this moment in time. Uh, and we also know the slope, right? So we know it's going up at a slope of 3. It should be going up sort of like that. And of course, that's a picture that we've been drawing in our slope fields in the graphical and qualitative approach. Okay. But now we're simply going to get just a little bit more specific with the numbers here and just say, well, okay, well, if, if that function kept growing at a rate of 3, then it would just keep going up, up, up with that slope. And so that tells us what it'll be a little bit later. Now, let's just say, like, you know, uh, now plus 0.2. So it's a little bit later. We've gone from now to now plus 0.2, a little bit into the future. And so we are now going to be up here. And exactly where is that? Well, let me draw this dotted line, too. So this base of the triangle is 0.2. And the question is, how, how high up did it go? Well, of course, we know that a slope of 3 means that for every 1 you move over, you would move up 3. Now, that's just a, that's a ratio. We don't have to only move over 1. We can move over, like if we moved over 2, we would go up 6. If we moved over 10, we would go up 30. Or like in this case, a smaller amount, if we went up if we went over by 0.2, we would go over by 3 times that, or 0.6. And so we'd be at 15.6. And that's the idea. Just to capture that in another way, we're saying that the change in y is going to be whatever the derivative is times the change in t. Now, the only thing I will change about that, however, is instead of saying equals, I'm going to say approximately equal. And let's talk about that. But um, yeah, it's a real simple, just a multiplication problem. Sometimes in Calc 1, we call this the microscope equation. So you might know it by that name. But it's just a real simple, obvious sort of fact about slopes and about the fact that the derivative is the slope. Now, just to spend a couple seconds on why is it only approximately equal and not equal? Well, the reason is that that slope is an instantaneous slope. The derivative means how fast it's growing right now, not necessarily 0.2 from now, or even 0.1 from now, or not necessarily at any uh, amount of time into the future. That is only right at that snapshot moment is the derivative 3. So although we are saying the slope was 3 right there, we of course don't know, and it probably isn't true that, the slope continues to be 3. right? So we really can't project it in a straight line. Most likely this y is going to you know, curve or something like that. It might curve downward, it might even get curve and go steeper, but um, you know, chances are it's not going to be a perfectly straight line. And so we're not taking that curve into account in Euler's method. 
But the idea is, if we don't go too far into the future, and that's why I picked a smallish number like 0.2, if we only go a little bit into the future, there's probably not going to be too much difference between the straight line curve that, that if the slope stayed at 3 versus what y actually ends up doing, which is curving a little bit. Uh, so yeah, the difference between what it really ends up being and what it is if you just project a slope of 3 for that whole time period uh, is going to be small if delta t is not too big. Uh, and of course, the smaller delta t is, the closer this is to being accurate. So this microscope equation is more accurate the smaller delta t is. OK, so this is the basic idea. And now let me show you, in an example, how we can exploit that and solve a differential equation uh, just straight numerically, just generating a table without ever getting a formula for it. Let's take a look at this initial value problem. Now notice we have a differential equation and an initial condition. And this is something I should point out right off the bat. Um, we have to apply these methods, Euler's method in particular, we're learning now, to initial value problems. Numerical approaches will only will give us particular solutions. So you, you need an initial condition. You can't get a general solution like the whole idea that we saw before of uh, having like a an arbitrary C in our in our formulas that represented all solutions. Or in the slope field, we have all these dashes, dashed lines throughout our graph representing all the different ways graphs could go through. With this numerical approach, we only can do sort of one solution at a time. So we need a starting point, and then we create a table that starts at that initial condition and just goes from there following the differential equation. So unfortunately, it's just sort of one at a time. It's We, we need to have an initial condition, and we have to work off of it. OK, so now what we're going to do, as, I, as we've been saying, is the, the end result is going to be a table of values. So we're going to set up a table. Here we go, uh, a column for t and a column for y. So those two columns, that will really sort of represent our solution. Now, along the way, we're going to also need to be computing derivatives. So I'm going to throw in another column for the derivative. We have to start at our initial time, whatever that is. 99% of the time, it is 0. And of course, we know what y is at that time. So our first row, of course, is given. And we can put that in there. Now we have to make a choice. We have to decide what other t's our table should include. Now this is where we decide sort of the step size. Should we go by 1's? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Should we go by 0.5's? Should we go by 0.1's? What should we do? Now as we were just discussing, the smaller the steps, the smaller the delta t's, the little jumps, the more accurate our answer will be. So if we want to get up to t equals 5, you know, it would be nice and quick and easy to just go by 1's, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But a step size of 1 is not going to be as accurate as if we go by 0.1's. So 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. But of course, the price we have to pay is now it takes, many, it takes 10 times as many rows to get up to t equals 5, if that's as far as we want to get to. So this is the trade-off. Smaller step sizes are more accurate, but of course we need more of them, and therefore more computation and more work to uh, cover as much ground. Just to get in and just so you can see how the method works, let's just pick something. Let's pick a delta t of 0.25. Let's go by quarters. OK, so then our t column will be like that. And I'm just going to do a short example. So we're just going up to t equals 1. So we have four new rows going by 0.25. That gets us to 1. OK. Now we're ready to actually do Euler's method using the differential equation. So put simply, for each y we have, we figure out what the dy dt is. Where, does, where do we get dy dt? Well, that's exactly what the differential equation is for, right? dy dt equals. 
we have to plug in y here and t here so the 0 for t will go in here and the 0.5 for y will go here and that will give us 0 0.25 I think yeah 0.5 squared minus 0 0 0.25 so that means the function at the very beginning is equal to 0.5 but it's growing at a rate of 0.25 now what do we do with that information well here's where we use that microscope equation idea y will change by amount by an amount that is approximately equal to the derivative times the delta t so for us currently on this row that's going to be 0 0.25 times and our delta t coincidentally happens to be the same thing 0 0.25 which is 0. 0.0625. So our delta y will equal 0 0.0625. Now remember, now that's delta y, that's how much y changes by. So we make our, our y is currently 0.5, so we make it change by 0 0.0625 to give 0 0.5625. And there we go. So again, the y and the t go into the differential equation to give us dy dt. We write it there dy dt gets multiplied by the delta t to give us the delta y which we then add to the old y to get the new y and that's the whole process you just keep repeating to go down uh, the rows so just to do it again and talk it through we now sort of our, our now time is is the second row time is 0.25 y is 0.5625 you plug both of those numbers into the differential equation to get dy dt. When you do, I think you will find that it, it's actually negative now. It's negative 0 0.1709. Sorry about that. Looked at the wrong space in my notes. It's negative 0 0.6836. So that's the rate at which y is changing. It's decreasing now. We multiply that by the 0.25 over here in the microscope equation. Again, that current derivative times 0.25. That delta t is always going to be the same value throughout the whole problem, in our case, 0.25. OK, and that is, that's the negative 0 0.1709. And again, that's delta y approximately and so we add that to the new the the our current y of 0.5625 and of course since it's negative that's going to go down and we get 3916 all right so that is the procedure behind Euler's method now you just keep going so let me just um, fast forward put in some the next couple of rows and we'll get to the end here Okay, there you go. So we have now uh, put put through up to t equals 1, and we have y being negative 0 0.8188. Everything, every number after the first one is an approximation, and we should always remember that. And how accurate it is is based on our, the smallness of our delta t. Um, but no matter how small delta t is, there's always going to be a little bit of error, uh, and ex except in very, very specific circumstances, which you should not assume are ever happening. Um, you should also know that because each y value, which already is an approximation, is then used to get the next dy dt to get the next number, that these errors are growing. The, the amount that we're off by is going to grow each you know, row by row, and so that this last number is going to be off by more than maybe that first number after the initial condition was. So we kind of, over time, wander away from what is really going on. Um, but that's, I mean, that's the price we pay for this method. And this method, as you can see, the benefit is is so systematic. It's so mechanical. Um, you, you know, once you understand what's being done, it's real easy to do. Uh, anybody who can plug numbers into a calculator can do it. Um, and yeah, it's very, very straightforward and it has, you know, you don't, it could be as complicated a differential equation as you want all that, because all you're doing ever is plugging numbers in to get this column. 
and so it's really simple but yeah the price we pay for the simplicity is the accuracy is not a hundred percent because this is so systematic and simple as you can imagine this is just prime territory for uh, computers and technology to take over for us this is I mean this is very repetitive a little tedious if you're doing it by hand um, but always the same thing every time and that's exactly what computers are you know excellent at so it is in practice people don't really do it by hand this is like slope fields this is something where we start we do it by hand just so we know we convince ourselves that we know what's really going on but pretty soon we move to letting technology do it for us but let me do one more with you by hand just so we know we're we're all understanding what's what's at play here Okay, here we go. Simpler differential equation, dy dt equals y plus 3. Now this is actually autonomous, which means it is absolutely separable. So we don't need to do this numerically. Uh, we could, perhaps, depending on whether we can do the relevant antiderivatives, we could uh, try to do this with separation of variables and try to get a formula for it. Uh, but nonetheless, let's use Euler's method on it, and actually it'll be instructive because we can, um, maybe afterward, we can get the formula, which of course is exact, and we can compare it to what Euler's method is giving us. Okay, so let's pick a small delta t, since we're, we're going to be comparing it to the truth. We maybe don't want it to look too bad. Let's go with 0.1. Um, you know, of course, we could go smaller. We could go 0.01 or 001, and it would be that much more accurate. Uh, but let's go with point 0.1. Okay, of course that means here's our t column. I'll just do a few. We'll see what we get. Let's aim to get y of point 0.5. Let's say that's our goal. And of course we're going to get an approximation, an estimate, right there. Okay, let's get started. Well, um, right off the bat, um, y is 0, it goes in for the differential equation, which because it's autonomous does not include t, so we actually aren't even going to refer to these numbers. We don't need to plug them in. So just 0 plus 3, so 3. So uh, y is growing at a rate of 3. All right, so remember, remember that delta y is approximately dy dt times delta t. So we've got a 3 times a 0.1. So 0.3 is going to be what delta y is. So this is now 0 0.3. Um, zero, this 0 plus 0 0.3 gives us 0 0.3. Now that we have that, we repeat. dy dt is y plus 3. So 0 0.3 plus 3. So 3.3. 3.3 times the 0.1 is 0.33, and that's the delta y. You add that to the y, so now we're at 0 0.63. Okay, once again, I'm going to fast forward so you don't have to sit through me doing all these. Okay, there you go. So after a couple more rows, we end up at t equals 0.5 with a y of 1.83153. All right, so that's what the Euler method solution gives us as an estimate, and I really should write approximately equal to there because that's certainly not exactly right. Um, but yeah, let's uh, just as a quick aside, let's uh, see how that stands up because we can do this in the analytical way as well. So uh, over on the side here, let's see. This is separable, so separation of variables. Um, dy dt equals y plus 3. I can separate it. I'll go through this kind of fast. Pause it at any point if you uh, want to slow this down a bit. In fact, maybe let me just fast forward. There's the general solution. y equals c e to the t minus 3. We then uh, plug in the initial condition to get it specific to that. So 0 equals c minus 3 
tells us c equals 3 for a final solution of 3 e to the t minus 3 that's the actual formula for the actual answer that is exact and if we plug in 0.5 to that formula this will be the real answer we get 1.946 etc 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 so you see we got 1.83 from our Euler's method it has over those five steps it has you know wandered away a little bit and it's off by about 0.1 not terrible and whether or not that's okay or not depends on what your what your purpose is and what you're doing if you need it more accuracy and weren't able of course to solve it exactly like we just did you only need to change your delta t it means more work remember you're probably not in real life doing this by hand anyway so it's probably okay um, but if we change delta t by 0 0.01 or maybe even 0 0.001 takes a lot more steps to get up to 0.5 but that number is going to be a lot closer to the 1.946 than it is now okay so hopefully after seeing these two examples you could employ Euler's method as a way of solving any first-order differential equation that comes your way it really is systematic and can be done to every single differential equation there's uh, nothing that can stop you from just plowing through these numbers.